Good morning, folks. We've got the second largest earthquake on record in northern Mongolia, snow records, sky scholar, a serious revision in astronomy, and an unusual mortality event potentially inflicted by the weakening magnetic field of Earth. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun without much activity, and yet that's not at all the case at Earth in terms of the solar wind. Before that, if you caught the coronal motion on the south, it was a plasma filament that released just behind the limb there. Most of it slid back down. The solar wind got interesting yesterday here at our planet. There was a spike in plasma density, yellow, and then it was immediately followed by surges in plasma speed and temperature. This is the coronal hole stream from the now turned away coronal hole we've been seeing on the south. The density spikes first because the faster coronal hole stream bunches up slower solar wind out ahead of it like snow on the blade of a shovel. So we get that density hit and then a less dense, faster, hotter solar wind stream from the coronal hole. It was only a moderately strong stream and so minor geomagnetic instability is all we took during the event. And we are off to Mongolia, where the second largest earthquake on record struck the region. The largest on record was a 6.9 back in the year 1950, and while this was widely felt on both sides of the border, there are no reports of injuries or major damage. As many of you know, especially those who live inside this area, records fell in the United States, but they really can't compare to the situation in Japan, where winter has been an incredible assault. And there's another event ongoing with more on the way. If you missed Dr. Robitaille's latest at the Sky Scholar channel earlier this week, it is a good one. Not only a good refresher on some of the best visual evidence of a solar surface, but a good explanation of why scientists should already have realized there's a major problem with their models. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when the story broke about how we're actually closer to the galactic center than we thought? Apparently that was just our appetizer. New measurements show the brick, one of the most famous molecular clouds in the galaxy, is less than 23,500 light years away from us. This is critical because it was thought to be less than 200 light years from the galactic center, which even at its new, closer distance from us of 25,800 light years away, presents a big problem. We now have an even bigger adjustment than the previous one on the galactic center distance, and at this rate by July they'll be telling us we're inside the galactic nucleus. I'm hoping that instead they could just finally realize how much of astronomy needs to be rewritten. Up next, folks, this is going to make the rounds heavily in the coming days, the unusual, massive, multi-year, unusual mortality event due to gray whale strandings, beachings. And the data is not only concerning, but we've had multiple reasons to suggest their climate guess is not correct. Not only is this La Nina making it seem colder in the waters, but the waters have been much warmer and colder than this in the past, no such beachings or strandings. However, we know that geomagnetic indices and atmospheric radio responses can disrupt gray whales. This was one of the biggest stories from earlier last year, and that means they are vulnerable to both solar storms and the weakening magnetic field of the planet. This magnetic change not only messes with their navigation, but it messes with their food. And something else messing with their food is the light. With Earth's magnetic excursion now underway, we are seeing ozone anomalies from the poles to the equator, and in general, the weakening will change the light profile down to the edge of the midnight zone. A one-two punch that I would argue makes for a more academically satisfying path than the simple climate change explanation given to us when the temperature in their region is not outside the normal range at all. It's the magnetic shift, the scariest thing in 12,000 years, underway again now. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more at the Cosmic Disaster playlist below this video, on our channel page, and at suspiciousobservers.org. Emails coming on Observer Ranch today. Website updates coming tonight or tomorrow. Subscribe to the channel. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.